Well, do you think that Joseph believed in angels before that night when Mary told him she was pregnant? I mean, after all, this was a pretty tall tale he'd been handed. But Joseph was a practical man. He was a carpenter, used to being cautious. You know, measure twice, cut once. His, that was his kind of wisdom. And he had a big decision to make. Here was this young girl to whom he was engaged, not much more than 14 years old, telling him that an angel told her she was pregnant. He must have been so disappointed in her. Joseph could very easily get, have given in to this disappointment, but he, 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 he knew if he cast Mary out, and this is something we forget about, he knew what the consequences could be. The community could, could have taken her out and stoned her to death. But Joseph was a compassionate, if, if disappointed man, so he merely planned a quiet divorce. That's the funny thing about compassion, if you think back of it in your own, own life. It can come out of us even when tragedy is striking. And in fact, sometimes it comes out of us because tragedy is striking. And the, the other funny thing is that's when the angels in our lives seem to show up. And on this holy night in Matthew's gospel, an angel occupies Joseph's dreams. He challenges, challenges Joseph to take the risk of personal disgrace. Just as the angel Gabriel and announcing to Mary was an invitation to her to risk death if people found out. That angel and the angel Gabriel were asking a lot of faith from both of them. Which brings me to this point. Do you believe in angels? Do you believe in angels? If an angel actually appeared to you, what would you do? Yeah, we are so skeptical these days about everything that if an angel were going to appear suddenly to us, I have a feeling most of us might run off to get an appointment with a psychiatrist, psychiatrist to make sure that we were okay. However, the, however there are some very well-respected people who did believe in angels. <clears throat> including Martin Luther, John Calvin, and more recently, Billy Graham, who wrote a whole book on angels. <coughs> John, <coughs> excuse me, John Calvin, who was the founder of the Re Reformation movement and wrote the Institutes of Religion, had this to say about what angels really are. Angels are the dispensers and administrators of divine beneficence toward us. They regard our safety, undertake our defense, direct our ways, and exercise a constant solicitude that no evil can befall us. Martin Luther eventually, eventually became to believe strongly in the concept of guardian angels. I'm sure you've heard of this before. Now, those are the beings who protect us often from our own mistakes, if we look, take a good look at it, by stepping in or having a human step in to save us. Now, both, both Calvin and Luther believed, because the, believed in angels because the concept of angels is so deeply and utterly embedded in scripture. In fact, the Hebrew world word for angel, which is malach, or Malachi, is found in scripture 231 times in the Hebrew Bible, and angel in the New Testament is found 176 times. Now, now while some might argue, the skeptics, that ignorant people in the past would probably attribute to angels whatever they couldn't figure out, it's the encounters I've had with angels that, uh, that I uh, particularly think disproves the idea that angels are mere superstition. 
Some angel appearances don't have wings. Some people find themselves guided to a place, and then they find themselves acting in the place of an angel. No wings involved with that. Take the story, I don't know if you heard in the last few days in the press, <laughs> since last Tuesday, down in Virginia, an angel appeared for a woman about to jump from a bridge into the Rappanock River. Just after 8 o'clock last Tuesday, uh, Fredericksburg uh, Sheriff's Office female officer, Lieutenant T. Merrill, was driving home. But it wasn't her usual drive home because she'd just come from playing Mrs. Claus in the Christmas pageant that the police puts on for kids. That's when she saw a young woman on the Falmouth Bridge bending over and looking under the bridge. Something didn't seem right to, to Merrill, so she, <clears throat> <clears throat> she turned her vehicle around to check on the woman. After doing two U-turns, the deputy found the woman in the same spot, but with one leg over the railing of the bridge. She used a radio to call for help. She was still dressed from head to toe in Mrs. Claus clothes, dress, boots, glasses, and wig. Lieutenant Merrill uh, approached the woman and started to use her tri crisis training intervention skills with her. And her call was heard by another officer. <coughs> so <coughs> Patrol Sergeant uh, Lynch was also driving home. And after working the Santa Run himself, pulled over to assist Lieutenant Merrill. Together they worked as a team, and they could safely pull the 25-year-old woman off the railing. But what's most surprising about all of this is that what the police, uh, uh, chief of police said after the incident, he said the, mo the most amazing part of the story is that Lieutenant Merrill and Sergeant Lynch each typically take entirely different routes home every day. Call it divine intervention, but I truly believe these officers were meant to take the, <clears throat> meant, <clears throat> meant to take the route they did and help save this woman's life. It's a true tr Christmas miracle, and I tend to agree with him. Let me see if I can dispatch this cough. <clears throat> As, as Calvin said, angels are another way for God to communicate with us when other means fail. They're celestial spirits whose ministry and service God uses to carry out all the things that he has decreed. I've personally, <clears throat> I've personally experienced an inex inexplicable save, saving from injury when an interior voice, that's the only way I can put it, I didn't hear a voice, but an interior message, <laughs> prompted me to move away from danger. One morning when I was driving to work in Sa at St. Joseph's Medical Center, this is back in the 70s, in Yonkers, I was right behind a big tractor trailer, an open tractor tra trailer. As we both climbed a hill <clears throat> on Yonkers Avenue, <clears throat> suddenly an interior message said to me, move now. So I veered into the left lane and I gunned the car. And at that very moment, the tractor trailer's load shifted. He tipped over. And all of his huge load, which was rebar, about thousands of pounds of rebar, landed where I had been just a few minutes before. I have no other explanation than the angel who guards me was working overtime that day. Now, while Luther didn't told us not to get carried away with our fascination with angels, he did come to believe that we have our own appointed angel. He said, your holy angel was with you and protected you, he'd say. Now, United Church of Christ pastor Jeffrey Durchess says, although in our depictions of spirits, they we show them with bodies and wings. They have none. The spirits are spirits. They are more than anything else like pulses of good. I like that line. Pulses of good, positive healing energy that emanate from God 
for which we absorb into our deepest soul and that jumpstart and fortify our conscience. They uplift us and uphold us in what is right and good. <clears throat> One definition of angel is that, we, uh, that they are created beings just as we are, but they've never been on this earth. Unfortunately, when, when people lose a loved one, we have a tendency to say, God's gotten another angel. Well, our departed loved ones are not turned into angels, but I have a hunch that they have more than a, lo a little angel-like clout from, from paradise. <clears throat> one of my favorite stories is by a, a woman named Kathy Lynn Harris, and she and her husband were experiencing something that Gary and I are very familiar with, and that is the inability to conceive a child. And so <clears throat> she tells the story. She says, my husband and I have been trying to uh, start a family for several years with no luck. It was a difficult time of doctor's appointments, hormone drugs and injections, acupuncture, waiting, fighting back tears at friends, baby showers, and grow a growing sense of hopelessness. After numerous fertility treatments that went nowhere, we asked ourselves, why? Around the same time, my husband visited with a woman at the school where he was learning, being t uh, trained in massage therapy. <clears throat> and she was a highly spiritual woman. He had mentioned our pregnancy problems to her. and She told him that she felt certain we would have a baby, but not soon. When we asked her to explain, she said she was getting a strong message from my husband's grandfather, who we all called Grandpa Mac. He had passed away a few years earlier. <clears throat> she said it's possible Grandpa Mac was holding the spirit of a child for us in heaven until we were ready to have that child. Now, mostly, she said, we laughed because we weren't sure we believed in that sort of stuff. Grandpa Mac, anyway, had always been a kind of jokester who would give you an empty box as a gift and then lead you outside and give you a car. So eventually, we moved on and looked into domestic adoption. And after much discussion, we knew we wanted to share our lives with a child needing a loving home. So during the waiting period for our birth mother to, uh, to be matched to us, the idea of Grandpa Mac's gift kind of faded. But we decided that when our soon-to-be son arrived, we would name him Grandpa's last name. McIntyre, that's where Grandpa Mac came from. When our birth mother, Amanda, went into labor, we were there with her and told Amanda at that point the story of Grandpa Mac waiting to bestow a baby on us. And then the attending doctor walked into the room and offered her hand for all of us to shake. I glanced at her hospital name tag and I caught my breath and reached my husband's arm next to me. Hello, I'm Dr. McIntyre, she said. The name was even spelled exactly the same way. Amanda and I exchanged wide-eyed looks. Our son was born less than 15 minutes later. Amanda held him first, and then Dr. McIntyre handed my husband our sweet baby, his fingers curling around ours. We'd waited a long time for this gift, but I think Grandpa Mac had the last laugh. In the words of Mary Baker Eddy, when angels visit us, we do not hear the rustle of wings, nor feel the feathery touch of a breast of a dove, but we know their presence by the love they create in our hearts. Amen. I wish you a Merry Christmas, Christmas week. I wish you the ability to keep your equilibrium and be easy on yourself. And give yourself a break. Be kind to you as you should be kind to everyone else. 
It's a week leading up to the reason this even exists. And the reason this exists is God's love. Christmas is the manifestation of God's love, and it's Christmas that becomes incarnate in Jesus. And Jesus then passed on his spirit to us so that we can do this, and we can be kind to people, and we can lift people up. So this week, I ask you to start with yourself. May God bless you and keep you. May God uplift your spirit full of holiday joy for the rest of this week and ever. Merry Christmas. Amen. Thank you.